Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome to another time of studying the Word. And tonight we're going to start a new series that I think will really be a blessing to your life. You know, the Bible talks about as a man thinketh uh, in his heart, so is he. So who you are in your life, who you are in your heart is going to be based on your thinking or the mentality that you carry. And so I'm calling this series Breaking mentalities of failure, breaking mentalities of failure. And I want to begin in Genesis chapter 12 because we're going to talk about several mentalities that we need to, to break up. We need to deal with self-preservation mentality. We're going to deal with the poverty mentality and how to break that poverty mentality. We're going to also deal with the comparison mentality how to break the comparison mentality. We're going to also uh, talk about how to break the consumer mentality. We're going to talk about breaking the hitchhiker mentality, the inferiority mentality, resource of, uh, resources are limited mentality, the wilderness mentality, the glass chin mentality, and the fear of risk mentality. I believe that as we uh, really attack these areas that you can find yourself uh, avoiding failure because you are addressing the way you think. You're, you're addressing those mentalities that have been established over, over time. And so I want to begin in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, because Abraham had a mentality that he had to get away from. Notice in verse 1 he says, now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy, father, from thy kindreds, and from thy father's house, and go into a land that I will show thee. And then in verse 2, look at he said, he says, And I will make of thee a great nation. I'll bless thee. I'll make your name great. And uh, thou shalt be a blessing. Now all of that was going to be based on if you will leave your kindreds, and if you'll leave your father's house. Now, what was he actually asking Abraham to leave? He said, I want you to get away from the mentality of your father's house. I want you to get away from the mentality of your kinfolks. He says, I got some things I want to do. I want to make your name great. I want to bless you. But in order for that to happen, I've got to break you away and get you away from the mentalities that are uh, obviously available in your father's house and amongst your, your kindreds. You know, some of, some of you are just a mentality, a change of mentality away from success in your life. Abraham being blessed and God doing this great thing with Abraham was based on can he break away from the mentality of his father's house and from the mentality of the, of the kindreds of his uh, family. And so uh, the first area I want to deal with, and this is a very, very important mentality that we all need to break away from, it is called the self-preservation mentality. Self-preservation. Now, self-preservation usually occurs when somehow there's some kind of fear that's come in that makes you think that what God promised in His Word won't come to pass, so now you revert back to instead of believing God to preserve you, now you, you go back to believing that you need to preserve yourself. Now, there's one thing about self-preservation mentality you need to know of. It denies Jesus as our source. Self-preservation mentality denies Jesus as our source. We now look to ourself for, uh, to be our source, and it denies Jesus as the source of our lives. So when you rely more on your self-effort to be your source to supply your needs instead of relying on God to supply your need as your only source, 
uh, and then you trust in self to preserve you and not God, then you've entered into to self preservation. And there's just a lot, of, a lot of areas where people have this self preservation mentality that I don't need God and I don't need others. And, and so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be my, my own source. And that usually ends up in failure because fear is, fear is what moves you to the temptation of self-preservation, self especially for a Christian. If you're in the Word of God and the Word of God promises you this or that, and it just doesn't seem like it's going to come to pass, you have to be able to avoid the temptation of self-preservation. Now, let me share some scriptures with you. At 1 Peter chapter 5 and 10 in the ES uh, version, ESV, one of the things he says here, take note, he says, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, comfort, and strengthen, and establish you. So here is God making a promise that I will restore you, I will confirm, I will strengthen, I will establish you. But some, something along the line comes in and it's fear that says, well, how do I know if I can believe God to be able to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish me? And so what happens? You move into self-preservation because you are afraid that what God promised won't come to pass. Now, you've heard me say in times past that the number one fear that Satan puts on Christian people is the fear that what God promised won't come to pass. But in addition to that, it moves you into self-preservation where you, where you deny Jesus as source in your life. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 6 through 7 in the ESV. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 through 7. He says, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and it's peace. So where's your mentality? If you, if you have your mind set on the wrong thing, it's going to produce the wrong thing in your life. Romans chapter 8 and 7 says, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God for it does not submit God's law, does submit to God's law, indeed it cannot be. You know, the Bible in Jeremiah talks about don't leaving, don't lean on the arm of the flesh. It curses he that leans on the arm of the flesh versus walking in the spirit. And self-preservation is without a doubt leaning on the arm of the flesh. It is depending on what you can do about the situation. It is depending on your abilities to handling it and seeing it as a source of your life. And, and that's going to lead to failure. Uh, you know, you're, you're depending more on your education than you are the wisdom of God. That's going to lead to failure. The promise in Jeremiah is that when you lead to the arm, when you lean on the arm of the flesh, uh, curse or that word curse means empowered to fail. So you'll be empowered to fail when you decide to remove Jesus as the source of your life, and then you, you want to take that place. And I told you the number one sin in the Garden of Eden uh, was the fact that they were trying to be like God without God, and that still exists today, that people are still trying to be like God without God, depending on their own self as the source. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 and 8, and look at the promise here. And the warning about you bragging about what you can do. Ephesians chapter 2 and 8. He says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. You can't do that of yourselves. So even when you look to yourself as a source, there's certain things you won't be able to accomplish yourself. He says, for by grace are you saved and you did that through faith. That not of yourselves. He said, it's a gift of God. And so when something's a gift of God, there's nothing you can do to try to earn something that's a gift. You have to receive it, you see. And then let's look at Matthew chapter 16. Uh, I want to look at this in the message, verses 24 through 26. Matthew 16, uh, verse 24 and 26 in the message. Uh, then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Wow. Look at that. 
He says, you're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. He said, embrace it. Next verse. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, uh, excuse me, he said, self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? I mean, this verse of Scripture makes it very clear that, you know, although our world is inundated with self-help protocols, he makes it very clear that there are just some things you're not going to be able to accomplish on your own. And there, this fear of preservation, you're going to have to get rid of it. You're going to have to get rid of this self-preservation mentality because it leads to failure. So don't be a Christian that operates in self-preservation. And everything is about, you know, what you can do. You have to, that moves into humanism. I, I feel like I can do everything myself and I don't need God. The whole thing is an attempt to just silence God, cancel him out, deny him the opportunity to be, you know, who he wants to be in your life. And, and ultimately, you, you go down this road, you end up in failure, and it becomes a sad testament of the fact that, listen, man's goings are of the Lord. He doesn't even know where he's going. And so self-preservation mentality must be destroyed. Leave that place of self-preservation mentality. The second mentality that must be destroyed, and I'll spend a, 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 a lot of time on this today because it's very prevalent in the body of Christ. It's very prevalent in the world, and that is the poverty mentality. Poverty is a mentality. Poverty mentality has to be broken in your life, or you're going to find yourself going down a path that leads to failure. Let me say it like this. Poor people have poor thinking. A mentality of dependence in having more so you can feel secure. That's, that's this, this poverty mentality, a mentality of dependence and having more so you can feel secure. You, 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 real security doesn't come from having more. But believe it or not, that's a poverty mentality. It's thinking that I never have enough. Poverty mentality is thinking that I never have enough. I never have enough time. I never have enough people. I, have enough, I, I don't have enough money. It's, it's, this, it's this mentality that just always uh, is thinking, I just don't have enough. Well, depending on man while declaring that they are not doing enough for you, depending on man, and then at the same time, declaring that they're not doing enough for you, that is a poverty mentality. This poverty mentality has a built-in system for failure. It's a built-in system for failure. Always thinking there's not enough, uh, depending on other people while declaring that they are not doing enough for you. Uh, let, me, let me give you some quotes that you may be familiar with uh, when you hear these kind of things to show you that that's a poverty mental mentality. First of all, have you ever heard somebody say something like this? I work so hard, but still can't make ends meet. It's not enough. That's a poverty mentality. I work so hard, but I still can't make ends meet. That's a poverty mentality. Or uh, if the economy would turn around, I might have a chance. That, 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 that quote is coming from a poverty mentality. If things turn around, I might have a chance. Or what about this one? You don't understand what it's like to struggle. It's the story of my life. You know, as if there's nothing that can be done about it. That's a poverty mentality. It's keeping you in that place. And one more. If, and, and I put a big emphasis on if, if I ever have any extra I'll be the first.